Good morning, Martians. Well, I wanted to start a new mini-series on Survival Let's Play. And I just wanted to do it because many people have um, expressed an interest in certain things. And as you know, I have like, what, a couple of hundred uh, Let's Play videos. And I have, what, almost a hundred... Um, editor editorial videos and they're kind of as the game developed I would make one and move on and so I decided you know maybe I will just start a new mini series that would be more um, survival starting with basic supplies um, you have to start with supplies and it, you'll notice that in this game and, and a lot of the new people probably don't know you have a space program and let me just hit restart game yeah yeah I didn't do anything so whatever um so you have a couple of choices here you can either go with the robotics which I'm not doing then they have the new manned mission added in chapter 2 and in here it's a built in scenario and I covered this I played this one during my regular let's play I just slipped it in it's uh, number 76 when they first added it and they've tweaked it here and there now, but um, it, it really is not kind of what I had in mind. Um, it, it's, it is definitely a, a scenario-based. I mean, you know, you have goals popping up and telling you what to do and grab this, grab that. And a lot of us like to just have free roam kind of play. So <clears throat> I made an editorial video, number 52, in my editorial um, editor playlist if you want to check that out how to build your own little real quickly a free roam scenario um, well I built one for this series um, at the Sidonia Mesa empty and I'll, I'll post that up on my uh, by the time I release this video I'll activate that one on my steam workshop if you want to follow along basically you're in a broke down truck and you got supplies in the back and you start from there so it's it, no lander no nothing no no hidden story behind it um but let's see how do i let's go back to main menu and so you can either go into the editor and build your own little free roam area and and a lot of people don't want to mess with the editor and spawning objects in and all this kind of stuff so that's why so many people are posting uh, starter scenarios um, on Steam. Now, if you look in the scenarios, they have built-in ones, but they all come with stuff, like a little shack, a half-built something or other. I have quite many of my own. But the built-in demos, um, they have tests that they have in here we can start, but they, they come with objects already, something already in it. Um, some of you might like this one comes with a lander so that's a place you can go get air and you can sleep and rest and whatever and heal in the bed um, but I made one Sidonia Mesa empty start so this is the one I have up on steam right now it's just a broke ass truck <laughs> with crates in the back with supplies and I think I have like flares extra oxygen water food the tools you need for sampling for mining um, and what, what, uh, oh, vitamins and stuff like that. Um, oh, and seeds. Don't forget your freaking seeds, man. Without seeds, you're you're screwed. And some of the original um, scenarios they even put out, the game developers, they forgot the freaking seeds. So we had to use the editor to go in there and drop seeds and stuff. It makes it more complicated for us as a player. So I could. Um, uh, I'm going to start on this one here, but let me back up here a second. And I'll show you what add-ons I have right now. <clears throat> one of the most important ones I use since day one is weightless resource tanks. Those are the big tanks that we fill um, with the small resource barrels to store our resources in. And um, they get heavy. You can't move them once they have stuff in them. So if you fill one with water or even with air and all that, you can't move them. And if you unmount them from the ground, they're now useless. I've done, showed that before where you can use the crane. You can really try to get them to mount. It's really, I was able to do it. It's ridiculous, so don't even try. Um, I replaced it. Faint has a, a pretty cool O2 suit alarm sound that replaces the, the annoying one. It's a voice that comes on, tells you replace your O2 canister. It's pretty cool. 
um, and I have uh, you know other texture ones and I, I mostly go with the texture ones right now because they don't conflict with anything the mobile lab one looks pretty badass and that's by faint also now these coincidentally he makes kind of the coolest ones um, there are a lot of other mods out there and add-ons um, but I, they conflict with each other because they all use the same files and stuff like that. Now, I'll use them periodically, but for right now, I'm, I'm not. I'm just going with uh, textures, like the interior of the helmet texture upgrade, low earth orbit I'm not going to be using right now. But I have those loaded. Um, I, you might check these out if you want to do texture stuff. But uh, one of the main one is the weightless resource tanks because you're going to uh, probably have to move those at some point. Or you might be playing a scenario where, like the developers made one on the moon, and they did not mount those. So you can't get the supplies out. There was like air and water, and you, and you couldn't get the, any of those out because your resource barrels wouldn't mount to it. Because they're not, cause it's not uh, assembled to the ground, uh, you know. So you can't use the, the mount points, which was ridiculous. And, like I said, there's ways to get around that, but it just makes it way more complicated. So I use this so I can unmount a full one and move it wherever I want to or whatever. So let's go back to this a little bit. And um, in my settings, I'm pretty much on low. Like if I just click low, um, sometimes I go like, you know, texture detail. I may even go lower than low. You know what I mean? Um, it, but I'll, I'll stick with the mid. A grass, I'm just going to take that all the way down. We don't need that. Terrain detail, that's just dirt, so I'm going to take that even down. Geometry is kind of important because this is like your load on demand. You know, if you're walking across your base, you don't want the other side of the base to disappear. So I, I, I bring that up a tad because it I really drives me nuts to have half my base disappear while I'm walking through it. Um, and everything else down, I just take super low right now because, I mean, I, I'm, I'm on an Alienware R3 tower. It's, it's good. I got good RAM, good processor, but it is uh, an older machine. And I'll be upgrading here shortly, and maybe I can put these all on maximum again. It seems like the further we advance in the game, the lower I had to take my settings down to continue to play. It's pretty weird. At first, I was maximum on everything. Then there was textures turned black, and then, you know, you start stuttering and all this kind of weird stuff. So I just go as low as possible if you have any problems. Um, they say physics simulator, if you take this... You know, I got on five iterations, um, and I've read some of the, um, on the forum by the developers that you can adjust these to, if you're getting issues, but whatever. So here's my settings on that. Um, as far as key bindings, I pretty much default. Uh, now on sound, I have realistic sound on. Normally I like to have this off so I can hear the wind and the whatever, but I'm just going to go with it on so I'm not inundated with like, uh, you know, uh, the drill kicking on and I don't want to have to stop I like hearing the doors you won't hear the doors if there's no oxygen but then if you're in an oxygenated area you will hear sounds and walking and stuff like that so that's pretty cool and I'm turning the music off just for the sake of not getting hit with a stupid ass copyright infringement or whatever the hell they call it um, I may put my own music in the background or whatever but in sound effects I'm medium and then we had the render, and then we have field of view. I have a 75. That seems to work out for me pretty good. Um, gamma is set on medium and stuff like that. So full screen. Vertical sync on seems to work good for me. Um, I'm using the 3D dynamic helmet character GUI type. Um, so if you move your head inside the helmet, it actually looks like you're moving independent of the helmet. A lot of times... I would use the static because I manipulated some of the graphics here and there. Like when the radiation came in, I would add my own little text and stuff. Well, that's hard to do when it's moving all over the place on the 3D dynamic. So the static one is what I was using for quite a while. But whatever you like. Now these two here, I'm not sure the difference of these. Uh, you got simulation on the lander GUI and rover GUI. Um, so I'm going to click sci science fiction. Because I'm not really sure what the difference is on those. So this maybe I'll notice this time. Okay, we're going to go back. Yes, save those changes. Now, on multiplayer recently, they say whenever you do a multiplayer, and, and, and you can load like any map on multiplayer and just tell it multiplayer. And if you want to do it this way, it's fine. You can do it as a single player. Just put a password on. And then you can do saves and everything this way. Now, from what they say, you always land in one of the new descent vehicles. 
with an ascent vehicle on top and it's closed in the fairings um, and that comes with food water and supplies and oxygen inside the lander so you, you will have a place to live and it comes with a printer uh, and a, and a um, fully fueled dune buggy so you can get around and go do test sampling and stuff like that uh, if you didn't if you know you want to do sampling before you do mining but here recently <clears throat> you know vehicles do not come with fuel so you pretty much want to set up quick one of each real quick um, and, and you can just have you know one generator per unit or one solar panel per unit now remember you use solar panels you got to clean them every day because the dirt accumulates and you lose power but right off the bat you can use the generator to um, and I'll show this as I go through this but this is kind of an introductory video just to explain kind of what I'm doing um, so I will be in when I load this it'll be in survival mode scenarios and I can die I can run out of air and you know what I mean my hunger is going to affect me radiation is going to affect me now, when you're out in the middle of a field or a plane or whatever, you will not, unless you can find a rock that has sh uh, shadows, um, you're going to get hit with rads. Uh, the truck doesn't have rad protection. Now, if you go underneath the lander and some parts of inside the, I want to call, I was saying lander, I'm, that means the new descent vehicle, you can hide under it and dodge radiation. But for right now, basically, it's just rock shadow. I mean, you have to get behind a rock or you're going to die of rads. I mean, that's just the way it is. If you can find some kind of rock cave or a big boulder um, that you can have, sh you know, you got to make sure it has shadow all day long because it may be shade on one side at noon. There's not going to be any shade if it's like, you know, no way to get under it. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and I'll cover all that during the um, during the um, mini series. And, 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 you know, take the training, whatever. It, it wouldn't hurt. Um, but like I said, this is mostly scenario driven game. Um, there is no, you know, bare bones start feature unless you load a scenario that was pre-set up for that. So that's how I'm going to be doing it. I got my own scenario set up and I'll show you all the goods I have when I get in there. And I'm going to be, uh, this is kind of a basically a walkthrough. So I'm going to be talking to you and telling you things as I go, what I'm doing, how I'm manipulating things I'm holding. I'm not going to display the actual key commands. I didn't want to load anything on my PC that will display the key commands as I hit them. I'll just say, you know, you know, if I'm rotating something, I'll tell you it's the home keys. That's those six keys, home, page up, page down, blah, 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 or the R. And I'll, I'll just mention that in passing. Um, I won't mention it like every time in every one of these videos because if you watch the first one, you'll get it. So at first, I'll cover many of those things, and then I may not mention it every time. Um, but like I was saying about the multiplayer, yeah, yeah, a lot of people have been doing this one even without it being multiplayer because you can set it to be on LAN. You can pick your, um, see here's games that are out there you can join right now and they're all just using the basic one scenarios. But you can actually, uh, you know, do your own. And you can create a game, you can pick your own scenario map and you can set a password. You can say LAN only instead of internet. And then basically... It's you'll have that lander, or I should say the descent vehicle. Um, but for right now, that's kind of what I'm going to do. And it's it's like been 13 minutes, so what I'll do is spawn in and show you what I have real quick before I, I get started on anything. Because I have no plan, I have no script. This is just going to be me playing a scenario basically. So it's Sidonia Mesa MT start, and I I don't really have a description here, but there is one on the Steam. Which is cool because if, if I update it on Steam, whatever I have here won't overwrite what I already have there. So that's that's kind of neat. And when you upload something to Steam, if you build a scenario, I wish it would automatically be hidden. Not automatically public and notify my followers that it's there. And then i got to quickly jump there and hide it. So if I jump over to the Steam page real quick, I have to go in here and change my visibility to uh, hidden. Now they're notified, I think, as soon as it uploads, and they're like, oh, wow, it's not here. That's weird. You know what I mean? It should automatically be hidden. That's just an opinion of one, and God damn it, you guys better do it. Um, so anyway, back to the game. So I'm going to go ahead, and, and, and I'll just save as I go. So every time I'll when I uh, make a new one, I will load in just like you would. I'm not going to be using the editor or any of that kind of stuff where I can, you know, spawn in extra water. When I die, I die. But I don't think I will. I've been doing this for quite a while. So let's just start the game. 
Okay, now we're in. So this is my basic setup that I have going on. We have a broke ass truck because I wasn't paying attention, hit a rock and, and bottomed out and I'm like, ah, crap. So I'm in the middle of nowhere. So I have my supplies in the back along with the printer and I'm, oh man, I'm, I'm out here in the middle of nowhere. So do I set up here? I'm kind of in, in an area where it's pretty nice here, pretty flat. Um, Mountains in the distance. I think that's the face on Mars over there. Isn't it? Probably. I don't know if it, maybe it's that over there. <clears throat> but anyway, so here I am in my starter position. If you're following along and you load this uh, scenario, um, you'll be right where I'm at. So basically, we might as well unload. Uh, we can always print another truck and head out to a new location. See, I'm not really stuck here. But I am limited on my um, uh, water. I mean, I have supplies. Here, let's just open the hatch here and see what happens. Let's see. Stow. Ramp. Let's go to the load position and see what happens. You kind of want to step back whenever you're doing uh, something like this because pieces fly off and it will kill you. So my goal is going to be to not die. That'll be good. Oh, there it goes. See, something's happening. <laughs> be careful. Yeah, you always want to kind of get back when the machinery is doing something because pieces will fly off. Oh, wow, that's practically a goddamn... Is it done? All right. Might be done. Or either that or it's straining. I can't really hear the strain sound. Because of the whole realistic sound. Okay, so we can start on loading, which is what I'm going to have to do anyway. And if I'm not mistaken, it's early in the morning. What time is it? Yes, it's not evening, it's morning. Okay. <clears throat> Should have probably paid attention to that because you don't want to be out here in the dark, can't see anything. I do have flares. <clears throat> Let's see, uh, we'll check all these containers to see what supplies we have here in a bit once I get them all unloaded so when you're moving an object um, the home keys like I was saying if you hit home and uh, those six keys there page up it'll let you rotate your objects in a snap formation it'll just jet like that so that's using the the six home keys page up page down and all that and but if you want to manually do it you hold the R and move your mouse and it'll let you free turn stuff that's holding the R key um, if you hold the shift I think it's a shift no not the shift what is it <coughs> hmm Interesting that. That's basically what I do is use the home keys and the R key, so I don't really know. And let's drop that right there. I was pretty sure the shift key let me rotate on a horizontal axis, but it didn't seem to do that just now, so I'm not sure. <laughs> Easy. You gotta remember, get hurt and die. I do have repair kits in here, and we'll take a look at all my supplies that I brought with me. And, you know, basically, whatever scenario you're setting up, that I could have been, you know, leaving a crash site, and I grabbed all the supplies and was heading somewhere. I mean, I, there's no storyline behind this particular one. So you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, so, yeah, and this first one I just kind of wanted to show you that, and I before I uh, start doing anything... I want to look and take account of my supplies, basically. Oh, it's the Alt key, by the way, to rotate. Rotate uh, with mouse. I'm moving my mouse and I'm holding the Alt. It wasn't to shift. I'm glad this thing didn't snap off. The 
the accident could have been worse. The sides could have fell off, the side ladders. See, from right now, from what I can understand, you can't... There's oxygen in the cab. You cannot charge your suits at this point. Let me go down here carefully. Careful. Here we go. Um, in, unless you have oxygen and methane in these... Um, put your barrels right in here. You can't charge your suit. Now, there's air in the cab right now, so if I was to go in here, that air gets blown out. You go in, you shut the door, you open this door. Now, both these areas are safe, and you can take your helmet off and sit in there and breathe. Now, a couple of times I went in, and there was no air here, so I think over time, you get this built back up with safe air where you can take your helmet off. That's just been my experience. You know, you don't have to quote me on that or anything. So, right off the bat... You want to take account of what you have because that'll always lead into what you need. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't want to waste your time producing something that you have plenty of. So you kind of like fuel. Methane is very important right now. I do not have any fuel. I know that for a fact. Um, I don't have any barrels loaded with anything. So right here I have my two. This is my suit containers. So I have a light and I have a, a heavy. Now a lot of times... You want the light. It has less oxygen, but it's easier to move around and stuff. I tend to stick with the medium, but at night you want to put your heavy on because of the temperature and stuff like that. This has better, longer um, oxygen. I think it's, what, almost two hours or something like that? What does it say? Yeah, two hours. And this one has 20 minutes, and I think my medium has yeah, 50 minutes. So almost an hour. So, yeah, you just kind of, you, you be aware of that. And, and right now we can't go change suits in there because there's no freaking oxygen. So right off the bat, you probably want a tent because we're going to be stuck here. So I'm going to get the printer and start a tent real quick because you want your survival tent. It is early in the day. So it's not like getting dark. And it's one-to-one -one scale, this particular scenario. So, it yeah, it's not getting dark till later. But you definitely want to get your uh, tent going. Right off the bat, um, that would be under accessories. Yes, yeah, so we'll get us a uh, survival tent because, and you're going to need oxygen for this too. There's a little place above the door. Um, but it does have a bed in it. So you you want that. And, and the bed will heal you. Um, but you're going to need oxygen right off the bat. So, and none of these, I don't, none of these air containers I have in here. So we got repair kits. That's if your little guy here down the bottom right, right there has red arms or legs or something like that you can repair it that means your suits damaged you'll go through the oxygen a little bit more so you want to use this is one time use only so you have nine uses in this particular scenario and we got you yeah, definitely got to have seeds so we'll grow food now if we're going to stay in this location is when you decide if you want to grow your potatoes and not right off the bat these are emergency air oxygen it gives you an extra 10 minutes so there you go on that one so you use that sparingly and these are your tools for taking samples. Right now, I'm not going to sample jack squat because it doesn't even matter. you you got to get started. We have food. We've got more seeds in the little containers here. So I put them in the little ones so they're easier to recognize. you got some water and flares for at night. Um, you're definitely going to want to print some lights right off the bat and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, so we got to get the tent. What else we need? What else we need real quick? We need... We should probably... And sometimes I'll print another printer. But I don't know if I'm staying in this location. And you saw I had a full load with just these containers. So if I was to print all my mining equipment, I'd be hard-pressed to get... If I print another one of these, and you can't tow one behind you. There is no load up and tow at this point. I've been pushing for that for a while. So you can, ha you can load up... Um, on some kind of cart or something, man. You can go out and move your mining equipment without having to fill this up. Because what if I wanted to relocate? I can't take everything. I have to leave something behind. I have to leave a... You know, if I have two or three printers, I have to leave two behind and just take one. Which makes sense. So, yeah. Let's see here. First things first. I got oxygen. I'm still... Oh, and I'm not hurt. I got food and water. I'm doing a survival tent right off the bat, which is something I would leave behind. Um, if I leave, um, you can easily make these again. Um, is this a good area? Um, yeah, let's go over here. Get out of the way a little bit. Let's 
Okay, that'll give us a place to crash out. We're gonna need oxygen right off the bat. And then you gotta kinda know what comes from what machine. Um, well, you know you can get carbon dioxide from the atmospheric um, collector. You can get water from soil. And you can split rock and soil into um, their uh, components. So right off the bat, I, I should probably print um, a navigation beacon. Not really necessary, but you never know. I might want to take off in a direction and be able to find my way back. Um, and it gives off plenty of light. One of these, I'll just put it right here next to the broadcast truck, and it should cast light on this whole area. So that, that kind of helps out if you're just having one light. I like these. They're kind of bright. I, don't, I only use one at every location, one of these white lights. And then I might put other the dimmer ones out around the, the campsite in case the wolves come in you know <laughs> I can't have the wolves coming in and sneaking up on you now, that's a good thing about this there ain't nobody up here trying to attack you you can actually turn your back so if I turn that on that'll automatically come on at night alright so we really need to we need a vehicle well we got to get our mining equipment up and running, so there's no, no way around that. So we're going to go here to machines. <clears throat> and we're going to have to get one of each, really. And I'm thinking... Yeah, we're thinking uh, atmospheric processor. And then the soil for sure. And then the refinery. So that's basically what I do right off the bat. So I'll go ahead and get my machines printed up and... Um, and then next time we'll just uh, talk a bit about you know what you need to create your oxygen, your water, and you can use your soil. And then we could do a greenhouse. If we're going to stay here, we might as well stay here. Good enough place as any, really. There's really no rocks around for radiation shielding, though, that I've noticed. So if, you know, hopefully I get like a five-minute warning, we can go and hunt down, you know, a good place to hide. There's probably a boulder around here somewhere. But we have to go track it down. We got to put a beacon by it because as soon as we see radiation coming in, the little warning, we're going to jump into a vehicle and dash. So we're going to need, they go super slow, by the way, buggies and everything, unless you have methane and oxygen as fuel, um, they're going to go super slow. So you, you definitely want to get the methane. Sometimes you can get it directly from this guy. So we throw that over there. Um, we're probably going to need a buggy. So we can do that radiation shielding, but um, we're going to need oxygen really quick. So, I mean, when you go into your tent, you're going to want to, um, so I'm going to go with the whole soil, topsoil extractor, because <clears throat> we need oxygen to put on the tent, because you're not going to have any air in there. And none of those uh, emergency air bottles will fit on that. You actually need um, a barrel that connect on here of oxygen, so. Right off the bat, right off the bat. What do I got? 50 minutes of oxygen left. Yeah, so eh, right off the bat, man. Right off the bat. We need to get some freaking shit done. Am I forgetting anything? No, no, we need, we need oxygen. And I could mount this guy while I'm waiting. And I already put out a video showing what resources come from what equipment. And right off the top of my head, I can't really remember. If only I had an eidetic memory. That would be sweet, wouldn't it? That would be sweet. So we're going to have a tight-knit little situation going on here at first. We can always relocate. Okay, we need energy. So I'm going to go with the generators, I think, at first. Um, and I worry about building the greenhouse here in a little bit. I have enough, uh, I don't know why they call it hydroponics. I've made that point before. It's actually just a greenhouse. Anything using soil is not hydroponics as far as I know, but that's just me. I should print another printer though. And right now it's not, I don't need, um, they have a lot of built-in resources into this now, so I call it the replicator. <clears throat> um, there are mods out there that make you use resources. But I'm just going with the basic game stuff here. This is what we have in it. And as I go on this little mini-series, 
If there's any changes, I will just adapt. So, I will point it out. So, we need to get some, we need to print some cable, power cables real quick. And uh, down and dirty is my motto on this kind of stuff. I'll worry about the whole power hubs and whatever at some point. So I know the suits I have in here are full of oxygen. So theoretically, if you could do a quick change without passing out, then that would be awesome. Oh, you can go change in the in the cab. Like I said, you'll lose the airlock air oxygen. So you can go into the cab and take another suit with you. So that that help out a lot. All right. So this guy, where's your outlet? Right there. So we'll put you over here. Get a spool going real quick. Now, when we're using resources, coming very soon. Uh, oh, no, no, I didn't want to do that. Oh, I can't cancel. Shit. It won't let you cancel. I forgot. They took that out. You used to be able to cancel this. Yeah. Doesn't let you cancel now. So I inadvertently printed that. I meant to do a spool. Um, man, I missed that cancel thing. That was amazing. That's all right. We're going to need it, but it's just wasting my time right now. Whoa, that's a kind of a weird mountain over there. That one right there. That looks like a cliff, doesn't it? I'll have to check that out eventually. But yeah, today in the first video, I just kind of wanted to show my basic setup. Um, and I know it's probably daunting to go through all my videos. I mean, god dang it. But I got like 400 videos up on my site now or something like that. And, it's, and I don't name them in the text part I, I I mean my description is in the thumbnail um so you kinda have to you know zoom to see what the description of each one so I could see where that would be I might go through and rename those uh, what whatever description I had on the um, thumbnail and put it right at the end of the name it might help some people out find stuff because some people are just looking for certain things and don't want to watch the whole freaking I mean who has that kind of time right so I'll try to make that a little bit more user-friendly where you can just scroll through the playlist and, and, and it'll be in the name. It was truncating the name. and I think you're limited on characters and I think that's why I went with the whole name and then just the thumbnail. But I'll try to make that a little bit more easily searchable. I mean, there's no... Yeah, it might that might help search. Yeah, because there's a search there. Um, so I'll try to do the description a little bit better. Probably next weekend or something like that when I got some time. But yeah, I thought I'd take this day and uh, just, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Am I forgetting something here? I mean, if you got any ideas, share them and I'll put them in here. It doesn't really matter. I mean, we're all helping each other, right? Isn't that where, what we're doing here? I mean, the whole reason I started this is because they had no fracking instructions or anything. I might as well get a drill going. Well, actually, processor. Get that going in the background. While I hook up this guy, and I'm hitting, um, remember the the home keys allow you to do this kind of thing. It's it's clean. If you get, if you hit anything, you're kind of going to get screwed a little bit. I mean, it'll bash into stuff. Is this one mounted? Yeah. So we'll grab a cable real quick, and the red tip goes to the power, and the green tip goes to the unit. So I usually just kind of pull this off to I get a look at what's going on. If you start running and walking with these things, you'll you'll take off flying across the map and die. Just so you know, just thought I'd warn you about that. Um, depending on how high you go in the air, anyway. Plug that guy in. You remember, I'm on realistic sound, so you don't hear all the electricity snapping and whatnot. I really I like that mostly, but I figure I'll go ahead with the realism. Okay, so now we got okay, no barrels. Get this guy out of the way. And really, I'm just going to throw one barrel on it. I mean, you know, I, I'm limited on uh, oxygen. And the more you run and the more you do stuff, the more oxygen you use. So this isn't like Minecraft where you want to run around and jump, bounce and bounce like a lunatic. When you're not doing something, stand still and your oxygen lasts longer. So right off the bat, I'm going to grab resource barrel. And I could just slap one on there. Actually, this guy. Let me grab that other power source. I don't know what I was thinking. We'll throw this in real quick. 
So I'm trying to use my, uh, you don't want to walk back and forth across the whole map, you know, your, your base too many times. And probably running isn't a good idea, as you notice my uh, estimated oxygen use just plummets when I run. So walking's probably best, especially in the beginning, when you're limited on oxygen and stuff. So we'll put this guy, look at this guy's power right over here. I'm just trying to make it so I'm not walking over all the power wires. Oh, I'm running. See, it's a force of habit right there, I tell you. It is a force of habit to run. But I'm making a video, so I figure, yeah, I'm trying to get as much in here as possible. And this is just the first one, so. Once I get established, that'll be it. So once I'm, I got my food growing and I got my resources gathered. Um, so that's why I call it a mini-series. Oh, wrong one. Where's it at? It's over here. Because once I'm up and running and have everything, and I'll, I'm just going to save like you would, right in the scenario. What do we got here? Any? Okay. With this view with the helmet, you got to look around, man, to make sure you don't have a warning coming in. All right. Jam this guy in. And this one here has five different things. It's not always going to be the same. This one here, if you, unless you get lucky, you can get water directly here. I think it was in this one. But you have to be really lucky and have an area with water, and it's, it's very unlikely. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We need another barrel. So we're going to, that, that's the thing. It's depending on what I get on this first barrel, and I don't believe they're always the same each slot. So hopefully I get some carbon dioxide here and not like something stupid. Yeah, okay, so I got lucky on that, because there's other things here I'm not using at the point, and I don't think it's always the same. I just got kind of lucky on this one. So we'll get carbon dioxide, we'll get this guy set up. Over here. Because we got to get some oxygen going. Don't run. I mean, I'll tell you, my, my pinky goes right to that shift key all the time. It's just force of habit for running. Um, yeah, let's get some more of these. I need another power unit. So, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the soil because this has, a, you know, a lot of what I need over here. So I'll go ahead and go with that real quick. And we're going to pull another, we need another power unit. And they're only going to run for a certain amount of time. I'm not relied on the sun with these guys, but it does. They drain and they build back up. So they'll, they'll but it's, they'll go forever. So day or night, <clears throat> they'll pop on and off. So Wow, I'm not, I haven't started to fly yet. That's pretty cool. I wonder if they fix something with that because, man, you have to be really careful when you walk with these cables for a while there. I mean, you're just like, choo! I mean, the trick is just let go. <laughs> People forget to let go and they just end up, you know, right across the sky, which is kind of fun, don't get me wrong. But in this uh, scenario-driven survival thing, I am not going to be risking life and limb. Like I normally do. I'm going to avoid jumping and diving around. And at least until I get my bed set up and, you know, I could heal and stuff like that. And then I don't mind hurting a leg. I don't want to use up all my uh, repair kits. Let's jam this guy right over here. Grab it right there. Okay. So now this guy, the refinery, as it were. So I'm going to need a bunch more of these little guys. Let's see, do I need more there? No. <clears throat> we'll get to all this. Let me move this guy a little closer. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll put the everything that you're going to process goes on the left, um, like soil. And it seems to be in carbon dioxide. So we're going to need some of that here pretty quick. But I'm going to need five empties. 
to put on the far side over here. Yeah, we need oxygen for my tent for sure. Because I got like, what, 38 minutes of oxygen. So I'm going to be using my emergency air. Or I could just change my suit. Now you got to remember, if you're using the heavy suit, you use more... I mean, it, it has more oxygen, but it's harder to move around. So there's more strain on your body. So you, your, your bio signs can go up, which in turn makes you use more freaking oxygen. So there is a catch-22 in that. Whereas the lighter suit has less time, but it's easier to charge up, quicker to charge up, and y your heart rate stays low because you're not hauling around a bunch of weight. And that's just things I've noticed. I may be wrong, but that just seems logical to me. And I, I've noticed um, yeah, if you're not running around and un unnecessarily, so stop and think about what you're doing. I got to walk to that side of the base. I got to go, you know what I mean? I got to, oh, look, the cables are way over there. Now, what I could do when I get another cable is throw them over here uh, take them all off the spool and throw them in the general direction you need them you get what i'm saying it saves a little bit of walking around like going upstairs your heart rate goes everything you makes your heart rate go up so i'll get these guys over here it says we don't have enough power it's been my experience to put two of those generators um so i'm going to print another generator the refinery seems to use more power than anything really I'm not necessarily sure about the drilling rig so I'm gonna run another power unit here now I don't want to go on too long on the first uh, rendition but yeah you see where I'm heading with this right and I'm gonna do it uh, straight through I'm not cutting anything out I'm not gonna you know hey uh, I'll see you tomorrow and then have everything printed already I mean I could do that if it you know you get tired of freaking uh, hearing me babble or watching me print or whatever but I'm just going to cover the basic survival here. And, you know, many people have asked me over, like, the last month or so. We're getting a lot of new players, so that's awesome. New Martians. That's what we need, man, right there. And the bigger the community, the better. And Dram, you know, he likes to have feedback. There's a lot of bastards that go on the forum and just want to bitch and moan like a little girl. But, you know, whatever, man. You go, go play a different game if you got a problem with it, man. I mean, I, I'm not sure why certain people don't grasp the concept of Alpha. You know what I mean? It's not released, and they'll release it when they're good goddamn and ready. Nobody forced you to buy it. See, this isn't Obamacare where you're forced to buy a product. Nobody's, nobody's going to the government and saying, can you use your guns to force these people to buy my product? No. Like car insurance, you have to have it. There's certain things you have to have in life. By the way, you don't have to have this game. So, maybe young folk just don't realize what that's all about, but us people who actually pay bills for a living... Um, we, nobody forced us to buy this game. We knew exactly what we are getting into. Um, and you know what? When you're good goddamn it ready and done and release it, then I'm happy for you and good for you guys, man. You didn't have to sell the alpha. Everybody was badgering you. Please, let us buy it. Let us buy it. You know what I mean? And then they bitch and moan. So whatever. My thing is don't cry about it. Um, it's just a game. There's important things going on in the world right now. And this is not one of the things that's gonna be like you know world changing or whatever nobody's dying it's not brain surgery and I understand the aggravation don't get me wrong I totally get that in many games but you know don't cry about it it's alright All right, so now we need some more empties Let's see, it's about a half hour, I think, right now. Yeah, so, look, yeah, we're on our way. I'm going to go ahead and uh, log out now and come back uh, later. It'll Now, when I save, it should be the same time of day. So, we'll just continue in the next one right where we're at right now. So, I don't think I'll be losing. I don't have to go hide or anything. But, yeah, you guys have a good one. I'll catch you next time.